Hi all. So today we are going to learn something about the WHO next generation partograph. So we are going to study the revolutionary changes, the revolutionary steps that are taken towards individualized labor care. A partograph is a graphical representation that depicts the progress of labor maternal and fetal well-being. It helps in making decisions about interventions and it would help to guide the mode of delivery. So why has the labor partograph changed? What prompted us to change? So as what was earlier thought by Friedman that the labor progressed rapidly after a certain dilatation like you here you can see the the graph in bold green is a Friedman graph after around four centimeter dilatation there is an acute rise in the slope that means there is an acceleration phase that is the cervical dilatation happens at a rapid rate after four centimeter of dilatation while what Zhang said was that labor may be normal even if it is slower and at the 95th centile you can see it is quite slow the dotted line here this is at the 50th centile which is still slower than what was thought by Friedman which is why we have come up with this new partograph that says that labor cannot be medicalized or cannot be uh, interpreted as earlier was thought that it would increase by one centimeter per hour after four centimeter dilatation rather it, it varies in different individuals and it can be slower and yet it can be normal so what prompted the change so progress of labor curve by Friedman et al was challenged by Zhang et al in view of this, we realize that labor progress must be reviewed on a partograph. Different women have different progress of labor and slower progress need not necessarily alert or prompt action, which leads to over intervention that we have just seen on the graph. So the drawbacks with the traditional partograph include over medicalization of labor, increased rates of cesarean section as a result of over medicalization debate on what should be normal labor and relevance of alert and action line is now questioned because we know that labor as slow as this dotted line here which is at the 95th centile can still be normal now we know that every birth is unique and some labors are slow some, some labors are quick unnecessary medical intervention should be avoided if the woman and a baby are in good condition also women participation is another unique feature of partograph the new partograph all women have a right to a positive childbirth experience that includes respect and dignity a companion of choice which is to be documented on the partograph clear communication by the maternity staff Pain relief strategies are also documented on the partograph now and mobility in labor and birth positions of choice would also be accounted for in the new partograph. The labor care guide is distinct from previous partograph designs in its approach to labor duration, triggers for intervention and its emphasis on respectful maternity care. So now the first stage is defined as the point where the contractions start increasing. There is substantial effacement, more rapid cervical dilatation is commenced and at, le at least five centimeter dilatation has been achieved. There is evidence based limits, time limits at each centimeter of cervical dilatation rather than having the action line and the alert line. We'll see what that means. There is explicit recording of labor companionship, as we have seen earlier, pain relief measures, oral fluid intake and posture. Records of duration and frequency of uterine contractions. 
specific alert triggers to be highlighted and the corresponding action to be noted. Intensified second stage monitoring of labor. And there is no alert and action line any longer. So now we would see what are the various components of the new partograph and how it emphasizes on companionship and women centric approach, supportive care as well. So as you can see here on top, there are these particulars that are basically to be documented like in the older partograph as well. This row here is for you to document the time. This would indicate the number of hours from active labor. That is five centimeter dilatation. There is alert written here and this column here would indicate the alert thresholds. So what are the various supportive care measures that are documented like whether there is a companion. If it's a yes, you write a Y. If it is a no, you write N and then circle it with a red circle. That means it is the alert threshold for that particular component. So if it is N, you can see here, that would be the alert threshold. If there is no pain relief, that would be the alert threshold again. If she's not taking oral fluids, again, that would be the alert threshold. And posture, she should be mobile as far as is possible. If she goes supine, then that is something that you need to look into. That would be the alert threshold there. So the next part of the photograph is the documentation of the fetal and the maternal vital parameters. So if we have the baseline fetal heart rate, wherein the threshold would be less than 110 and less more than 160. L is late decelerations. If it is otherwise normal, then you need to, you need not highlight that. Amniotic fluid is either clear or intact membranes would be normal. But if there is meconium and there is bleeding, then you would need to highlight. Fetal position, posterior or transverse position would be abnormal. Occipital posterior that is. Caput molding abnormal. And uh, so it's plus plus plus. So here you know that it's a severe grade of caput or molding, then it would be abnormal. Pulse, if there are thresholds set, systolic blood pressure, diastolic blood pressure, temperature thresholds, as well as urine thresholds are given here. On to the most important aspect of the partograph, wherein we need to plot the number of contractions against time, the duration of contractions, the cervical dilatation and the descent of the head. So here again, you have the time plotted in the first row. Alert thresholds are given here in the second column and you need to document the dilatation. A per vaginal examination is done every four hours. So the dilatation would be plot plotted every four hours provided the labor is progressing normally. For example, if the labor has started at 8 a.m., she's five centimeter dilated. The next uh, documentation would be done at around 12 p.m. That is after four hours. If she remains to be five centimeter dilatation dilated, then the next dilatation would be uh, the next examination would be done after two hours because a total of six hours or more than six hours if spent at five centimeter dilatation that would trigger an alert. Similarly, for six centimeter dilatation, the threshold is five hours. So she should not be in at six centimeters dilatation for more than five hours. So we will we would be seeing how the plotting is done in the subsequent uh, example that we would see. Similarly, the descent of the head is plotted against time in fifths. So if the head is four fifth palpable, it would be somewhere here marked with an X. If it is say three fifth palpable here and if the head is not palpable at all per abdomen, then it would be marked here zero. The second stage of labor is also plotted, which is a unique feature of the new partograph. So here you can see the number of contractions are to be plotted here. 
the duration of uh, contractions and wherever the uh, pushing phase of the second stage starts you would have to denote a letter p wherever the pushing starts so that is for us to understand that the active phase of labor of the second stage of labor has started so here you can see the medications that are offered are to be plotted here if there is oxytocin started you would plot against time whenever oxytocin is started if any other medication like some pain relief measure is given that you would plot here iv fluids given not given would be plotted in the third row assessment is to be done every hour and your plan has to be documented so here as you can see there is a row for the plan like if the labor is progressing normally you would write continue monitoring if the labor has crossed a threshold say for any particular level of dilatation then you would write maybe you would ask the midwife to write inform ob gynae and the last column is where or the last row is where the person monitoring or the midwife monitoring would sign her initials so this gives you an overview as to how the who labor care guide differs from the older modified who pathograph as we know that the strict definition of normal progress of labor 1 cm per hour is no longer considered valid instead we have time thresholds for each level of cervical dilatation there is no action line there is no alert line you do not record the strength of the contractions instead you record the number and the duration of each contraction there was no second stage monitoring in the older pathograph now we have intensified monitoring in the second stage of labor so this is an overview of how the who labor care guide differs from the modified who pathograph so to summarize the intentions of the labor care guide is basically it would maintain patient dignity as respectful maternity care is one of the important components empowerment of laboring women because women are also involved in the decision making bit whenever the plan is documented on the pathograph the woman the laboring woman is also involved in the decision making uh, along with the obstetrician as well as the midwife it reduces interventions as we know that labor can vary in different women okay it can be quick in some and it can be quite slow in others and yet can be normal there are specific alert thresholds informing midwives when to alert ob gynae to review labor record is no longer subjective rather it is objective which is why it is more reproducible for example the strength of contractions which was earlier denoted on the older pathograph is no longer considered now we consider the number of contractions and the duration which is more objective there is more intense second stage monitoring and women centric care so her decisions are taken into account at every step which is why this is important step towards respectful maternity care and empowering laboring women So here is an example of a 24-year-old woman, Amanda George, primary gravida at 38 weeks of gestation with low-risk pregnancy, arrives in the unit at 2 hours, that is 2 a.m. with onset of contractions two hours ago. She is examined and found to have a pulse of 86 beats per minute. Blood pressure is 110 by 70 millimeters of mercury. Her urine examination is normal. Temperature is 37. she is contracting 3 in 10 lasting for 30 seconds each the fetal heart rate is 136 beats per minute and fetal head is 3/5 palpable she is 5 cm dilated and has intact bag of membranes uh, her baby is in loa position and her companion has not yet arrived and there is pain relief that she is asking for she is mobile and having oral fluids photograph the particulars are mentioned as is shown here amanda george parity is zero or labor onset is 2 am there are no risk factors so the time 
at which the labor is started as you can see here is written in the first block here which is 2 am here then there is no companion so we write an n and circle it with a red circle because there is no companion so that is the alert threshold you can see n is the alert threshold the next is there is no pain relief so we have again written an n and circle so now the midwife knows that she has to call her companion and she has to start or ask her for options for pain relief then she's taking oral fluids so that is not a trigger why her posture she's mobile so it is denoted with a letter m and she's not supine sp here is supine which means if she is lying down constantly then it may not be such a good a sign so supine would be a an a trigger for alert baseline fetal heart rate is 136 which is normal l here stands for late decelerations but here we don't have late deceleration so normal m and b stand for meconium and blood so amniotic fluid here membranes are intact so i fetal position p and t stand for posterior occipital posterior occipital transverse here we have an occipital anterior that is loa so we write an a which is normal caput molding we do not know yet because the membranes are still intact so we would say unknown for both so now here the pulse is 86 the blood pressure systolic is 110 and diastolic is 70 temperature is 37 urine is normal number of contractions is 3 which is again normal her uh, duration of contractions is 30 seconds normal again she is 5 centimeters at the start of the partograph at 2 a.m so we have denoted it here you can either tick put a tick or a cross and she is three-fifth palpable the head so here so this is how we plot the partograph so what would be the plan next there is no need for oxytocin no medicines are given there is no iv fluid she's taking orally so you know that the active labor has started so that's the assessment that we have gathered from the findings so the plan is to monitor her and here would be your initials so that is how you would make a plan every hour So then the next reassessment was done at 6 a.m. And now we have the companion. So the red circle is gone. We have pain relief measures. Again, the red circle there is gone. She's still taking oral fluids, but she's now lying supine. So then we have circled it again here. Rest of the parameters are normal. Here we can see that the lyca is clear. Membranes have ruptured. Rest is all normal. There is no caput. There is no molding. So this is how we have done an assessment after four hours of the initial dilatation so again now after four hours we can see that the pulse is 90 120 is the systolic blood pressure 80 diastolic 37 is the temperature so everything is in normal range contractions have risen to 5 in 10 which is again normal and duration is 50 seconds normal again she is now fully dilated so she has progressed after the four hours period and her head has descended down because there is the station or the fifth number of fifth palpable here is zero now. This is what we gather from the partograph. So the assessment and the plan is plotted every hour. So it is known that it is progressing normally. So all you need to do is monitor and sign at the end of it. So let's take another example where the partograph goes abnormal. So now initial dilatation at 2 a.m. was 5 centimeters. So that is plotted in the first column. So next we reassess after four hours. So we have reassessed after four hours. The parameters, the maternal parameters and the vitals and contractions are normal. However, the dilatation is 5 centimeters still. Okay, so now what to do next? It wouldn't be circled with a red or a basically a trigger. So, because at 5 cm dilatation, the dilatation has to remain 5 for more than equal to 6 hours for us to 
say that we would need to alert the obstetrician. Okay. So next reassessment would have to be done after two hours. So if it still remains five centimeters, then we know that we have to do something about it. So that is an alert threshold. So we would assess her after two hours. So if it is 2 a.m., then 6 a.m., now it would be at 8 a.m. If we have reassessed her now, and there are certain parameters that we have found to be abnormal, like 38 degrees is the temperature. So there is fever now. Her contractions have risen to six. So there is tachycystole encircled and she is still five centimeter dilated. So that is a trigger. So we'll see what we would do next. So now we need to know how the assessment and plan would change. So here when we noted after four hours that the labor is progressing slowly here. We have written down that there is slow progress and we need to reassess in two hours. So you would monitor, but you know that now the progress is slow. Here, what we have written is after two hours is that the labor had, has arrested and we would need to inform the ob and accordingly make a plan for delivery either by cesarean section or we would need to reassess basically. So this is what it is, and this is how the new partograph differs from the older partograph. So the salient features of the new partograph is that it is more objective. It involves the patient, the woman in the decision making. There are other aspects of care that are documented like pain relief measures, whether the woman is mobile, whether she's taking orally fluids, etc. And Second stage is also documented. The monitoring in second stage is also documented. So there is intensified monitoring of the second stage. I hope with that, the new labor care guide is clearer to all of you. Thank you.